Hey, it's Bullfrog here. I'm out with a little tadpole, and we're looking at the chickens, and I figured this would be a good time to uh, do an update showing you how my breeding projects are going. Here. Hey, little tadpole. Say hey for the people on YouTube. Say hello. Yeah. Say, how are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go find the chickens. What do you call the chickens? A guy. What, what do you call? A guy. Well, yes, the chickens are outside, baby. Uh, and, and what do you call them? She calls them Bop Box. Bop Box. Yep, the Bop Box. Let's go find some of the Bop Box, okay? Okay. I just threw some feed out here to bring the flock up. Now, this is not the whole free-range flock, but that this is most of the flock at the moment because I just removed uh, 24 chickens off the farm. And the reason I did that was I, I traded 12 of them, 12 of my cracker hens for cow. I, I'll talk about the cow in another video, a milk cow, mini milk cow. And um, then I had some of my American game bantams that, that I didn't want for my breeding projects. So I ended up giving them away and then I sold a few more. And uh, there's one of my liege hens. The chickens are going through molt right now. See, that's number one right there. You see, he looks pretty rough because he's molting, um, but he, he normally is a much different looking bird than that, but that's natural for them to go through the molt. But I've thrown out just a little bit of food so to bring them up so I can show you what I'm working with here in terms of my breeding projects. Most of these brown hens are my purebred crackers, these little brown hens. You will see a couple hens though that have a, um, a blue band on their leg. There's one of them right there. All right, see her? There's a purebred cracker coming up behind her. Can you see how the one with the blue band on her leg has a much bigger body than the crackers? She is a blue face American game. And you can see that she practically looks like a cracker. She's just bigger, bigger built. And here's Daddy, another one. My baby go. My baby. There's another one right. There's another one right there. Walking amongst the crackers. And I'm going to breed both of them to number one and infuse their genetics into my crackers. And it should make my crackers larger to where my crackers will lay full sized eggs. Now, here's another one of my projects. That is a half a zeal and a half liege. And the little black hen that just ran up to him little black pullet I should say is the female I bred two dozen of these and of the two dozen I bred only those two survived uh, when the rain started they could not handle the rains and every time I'd have a heavy downpour uh, they would get sick and I'd lose two to three chicks in a batch and those two are the two most vigorous ones that could handle the Florida humidity they still got a lot of growing to do but you can just see how how well built they are they're they're really muscular and really fierce pretty good looking birds now these are my last half a zeal half liege because i've since removed the azeal off my farm and uh i have seven of these and it's time for these to actually be turned loose today's the day i'm going to turn them loose they're getting too big for this brooder, and it's time for them to either sink or swim on their own. So here in just a bit, I'm going to put them out to free range. Daddy, I did. Yes, no, baby, the rabbit's not in here anymore. We actually had a um, a wild cottontail baby that our dog brought up to the porch that we raised in this little brooder until it got big enough to fend for itself. So whenever Anna Lynn is out here, she always asks about the rabbit. Okay, I'm actually going to turn these out now and then going to let them join the flock. I now have the last batch of half a zeal, half liege out free ranging. So they're going to have to either sink or swim on their own now. We'll see which ones are the tough ones. They're good looking birds. They just, they, up to this point, 
they have not been good at handling Florida's humidity, I found, which both breeds, the Azeal and the Lees are considered Orientals, Oriental game fowl, and what that means practically is that um, they their genetics are from birds that come from parts of the world. Now you think of the Orient as being like humid jungle and whatnot, but a lot of the Oriental breeds are actually coming from Central Asia, the more arid places like Northern India and Afghanistan and places like that. So um, they come from places with more arid environments. But we'll see, we'll see how these do. If I get maybe two or three more out of it to go with the pair that I've got, those might be good enough for me to actually then start setting the breed through line breeding. But you know, they've, They've got to. They've got to do good in Florida's environment. That's the whole point. If if they can't make it on their own, well, then it's a. It's you know just call the project a failure. But we'll see. I really love their physique. One other thing to point out real quick: these next couple of days that they're out free ranging for the first time will be um, their most vulnerable time for predation from hawks because they haven't been around the hawks yet, and um, so they're not going to be as alert or as quick to take cover as they should be when a hawk comes over. They'll learn from the other chickens. We might lose one or two that way, but the survivors learn quick. It doesn't take but a couple of uh, passes from a hawk for the chickens to learn that don't already know. And if that uh, turkey hen hangs out with them, I, I strongly believe that domestic turkeys have a deterrence factor on hawks. And so if she decides that she's taken a liking to him, and it seems like she has, um, that, that'll that be a good thing. Okay, here's some good footage of um, my little um, half a zeal, half leaf stag. Hey, hey. Let's see, see just how good his physique is. Long legs, strong legs, muscled. And he's just a, he, he's, he's kind of just a chick. I think he's about five months old. So he's got a lot more maturing to do, a lot more maturing. So um, I'm very impressed with him, very impressed. Here's a couple more of my breeding projects. These are some of my American game bantams. And again, they're molten. That stag is actually a third generation American game bantam stag that I'm line breeding. The hen is a first generation. So I'm line breeding that stag to that hen. That's his, um, that's his grandma. And um, after I'm done getting a clutch off of her, Yes, baby, that's their water. Shut the lid for me. And after I get the uh, get a batch off of these, I'm going to um, end up putting her back in the main American Game Bantam coop. Not sure what I'm going to do with him. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep him or sell him. He's a, he's a pretty bird, and he'll be even prettier when he matures. He isn't. I don't think he's, I, th I think he just is five, five or six months old right now at the most. Now in this very tiny little coop, I got two tiny little chickens. These are offshoots of my American Game Bantam project that um, I've developed that are actually way, way smaller than American Game Bantam. They're basically ceramicized. That little stag is 17 ounces and that hen is 11 ounces. And what I'm very excited about with these is that um, most of the small breeds like uh, Saramas and um, Japanese Bantams and uh, Dutch Bantams and whatnot have very short legs. That's where a lot of their, um, their weight sh savings comes from is they just shorten the legs. I actually have developed, and I'm gonna show you the next generation I got coming up. I'm on my way to developing a perfectly proportioned game Bantam that's as small as a Sarama 
but instead of having little stubby legs, they're gonna have long legs and athletic bodies. They'll be very healthy. Just very, very tiny. Everyone's kind of freaking out right now because I've walked into the band in the yard and I upset them little tiny ones I was looking at because of filming and the camera scared them and Anna Lynn scares them because she usually ain't out here with me with them. But this is another batch of little micro bantams. That hen right there, she's the mama of those. And uh, she's about 12 ounces. But look how well proportioned she is. You can see that she's um, uh, long-legged, full-bodied, long wings. She's just very, very tiny. And her offspring back there are also very tiny. Now, some of them have, like, munchkin traits, and I'll have to sort out those munchkin traits to see whether or not I like them or not. But you can see a couple of her daughters back there are long-legged and athletic, and a couple of those little stags are long-legged and athletic. So we're going to just let these continue to grow out and keep on developing this line. So these are my American game bantams that I'm breeding to show standards, which means they're a lot larger than my teacup bantams. And you might recognize that green-legged one over there. That's Survivor Lady. I've put her into this project. She's a purebred cracker. But you can see she basically has the looks of an American game bantam, and she's tiny like one. There's General Lee there. He's just coming out of molt. And you just see what a beautiful boy he is. And um, and this is this is my show pen right here. The, these are going to be bigger. He's thir about 30 ounces. I think he's a little hair. I think he's about 31 or 32 ounces. But by the time I dub him, when that time comes, he'll be back to a perfect show weight of uh, 30 ounces. And um, like I said, those are the that survivor lady. And there's a American game bantam hen. And these are just going to be bigger now. There's one of my little um. That little chick right there has got some kind of wound on its mouth, but he seems otherwise okay. But those are actually Survivor Ladies chicks bred to this rooster. So I want to see how they come out. All right, here's some more of my American game bantams that I'm line breeding. That stag, he's he's 30 ounces. Now, he's also molting. You see around his neck, he's got some feathers filling in. But uh, he is about a perfect 30 ounces. And I got him paired in with a hen there. But he is a Gen 2, actually. He is uh, the nephew of General Lee. His father was General Lee's brother. And uh, this is actually going to be the first one I'm going to dub. Uh, I consider this rooster to be kind of expendable. So I'm going to practice dubbing on him this winter when the weather gets cool. All right, this is the last pen I'm going to show you all. I've got four of my best cracker hens in here. These are purebred crackers. And with them, that, that's a Lee Pure Lees there. She's molting right now. The stag that's back there with him, he's only about six months old. And that is a purebred Donnelly Blueface that I got off of um, Bernie Donnelly's farm, a little way south of me in North Florida. And uh, he is a pure, Donnelly Blueface that actually came off of his best broodcock, and he is huge. You can see that next to that leash hen, he's about as big as that leash hen. She's a little bit bigger, not much bigger. He's not standing up totally straight right now either. I tell you, all these chickens are scared of Anna Lynn. She's right over here playing by the pen, and like I don't usually let her come out here with me because there's a lot of snakes out here, but I'm, I'm watching where she's standing right now. Okay, now that he's standing up, you can see he is actually as big as the liege hen. Oh, baby, don't don't pull off the tomato. She's over here plucking my tomato plants behind me. Um, but I'm going to breed him to these, my best crackers, and uh, best cracker hens, and uh, hatch those out this fall and see what those half-breeds look like. And between the half-breeds I get off of this huge stag and then the half-breeds I get from putting number one, to my blue face hens um, between the two uh, I'll get an idea as to whether I want to take my crackers in that direction or not to where I want to infuse this blood through all my crackers I think it'll make for a more practical farm bird because they're gonna be so much bigger I also kind of think they're gonna be more athletic because everything I breed to my cracker the cracker 
that physique travels with the the genetics so what I mean that don't make sense the way I said that what I mean by that is the crackers seem to improve everything they breed in terms of physique so if I can get the size of the blue face and the physique of the crackers I think I'll have an awesome chicken so uh, awesome survival and homestead game chicken so I'll keep you all updated as the breeding projects progress but this is just what I wanted to show you. And I got a few more musings to um, impart on you in here in just a minute. So here's how I'm gonna end this video. This is the next day after turning out these half a zeal, half leash to free range. And remember yesterday I predicted that we may lose one or two to a hawk because right now they're just kind of naive. And I predicted that, that that was likely to happen. That's been my experience that that happens when incubated chicks are turned out for the first time. As you can, in fact, see, my prediction came true. Uh, this happened sometime uh, late this morning or early this afternoon because this morning um, all seven of the chicks had made it through the night outside on their own. They were fine this morning. So sometime between uh, then and now, a hawk took this one. You see it flew off with the body, just left the head and some feathers. But that's all in it. It's survival of the fittest. And it's up to these six that are left to have learned from this and um, to not be hanging around in the open like this one was um, when the hawk's about. Like I said, they're either going to sink or swim. That's the name of the game. Every chicken out here has um, been a survivor that's made it this far. So these are going to have to be the same if they're going to make it. So anyhow, this has been Bullfrog. Thank you for watching.